Hello everyone and uh, welcome to Reentry. In this video I'll be showing some of the new features that the uh, update 0.94 will add. So 0.94 will mostly be about bug fixes, so if you take a look at the patch notes you will see that the list is quite long. Uh, so first of all thank you for everyone who has been reporting these issues so that I could uh, fix those. Um, some of the main new features that 0.94 adds is some improvements to the Mercury physics model and then uh, some of the improvements to the Mercury interior of the capsule. So first of all, if you take a look at the interior, you can see that there's some new details added. Uh, you have uh, some updates to uh, some props in the cabin. Uh, you have new models for all of the fuses, so you can see that the UV mapping issue has been just, uh, removed. And you can see that there's some details inside of every fuse. There's some uh, screws added, and if we go to the other side of the capsule, you can see that the same update has uh, been given to these fuses as well. Uh, another update is uh, the coloring of the needles. You can see that on the attitude indicator, you can see roll is white. And the same is the roll uh, rate indicator here. Pitch is pink and yaw is yellow. So if I now uh, change this light, you can see that it's a little bit easier. So yellow, pink and white. And this makes it easier to kind of understand what axis each of these needles on the rate indicator means. And lastly, you can see that the window has been changed uh, to better reflect reality. And uh, some of the panels that it used to have uh, is also added, so you can go ahead and close those if you want. And there's a lower panel here as well that allows you to uh, set the shadow or protect the attitude indicator if needed from the sunlight. Uh, so that's kind of the main updates on the interiors of the Mercury uh, capsule. If I now go to the exterior, uh, you can see that under the heat shield there's a retrograde engine. Uh, I've been working quite a lot on the physics of how those engines worked. So now if you would uh, jump into a free play mission and uh, in an Atlas rocket that should be quite similar to Mercury Atlas 6, you would launch into orbit. Uh, there's some new physics being uh, applied to the ascent guidance model as well. And then uh, once in orbit, you can follow the real uh, time for retrograde and if I remember correctly, that was like four and a half hour uh, for Mercury Atlas 6. So if you set the retrograde engines to four hours and 33 minutes or something like that, you will splash down in the correct location uh, that Mercury Atlas splashed down in real life. Uh, so Mercury, if, you've, uh, if you're new to the game, make sure that you uh, run through Mercury to get to know the mechanics of the game and kind of get introduced to how orbits and orbital mechanics works before you jump into Gemini and Apollo because that's quite enough required for you to know. If you've been playing uh, Mercury before, uh, make sure that you jump back into the capsule to see these new updates and I do hope that you will enjoy them. So the next uh, feature that I want to cover in this video is uh, some big updates to the uh, Lunar Guidance Computer and the, the moon Maneuver Planner for both the uh, Command Module and the Lunar Module. So inside of the Lunar Module there's, uh, there's some gyros uh, that maintain an inertial platform. And this inertial platform could be anything. It's just something that uh, is used to define what's up, right, forward and so on. And typically uh, before burns you would uh, torque the gyros, so you change this platform to better make sense for a burn attitude. So for example, in the command module, you would uh, set the platform so that the burn direction would go through the center of the attitude indicator 0, 0, 0. And a similar method is used in the lunar module as well. So basically, um, you can see the attitude indicator ahead of me here. It shows you your attitude relative to that inertial platform. And now I'm going to jump into the lunar module. So typically what you want to do before a burn is to decide, okay, do I need to change the inertial platform before the burn? Do I wish to torque the gyros uh, to make it easier to maintain an attitude? Or can I use the attitude uh, or the platform that's already set up? So 
if I now go into the burn planner, uh, you are, can now go ahead and plan a burn. If I open the mission pad and go into map, you can see that I'm currently uh, in an orbit with an apogee of 60 nautical miles of altitude and a perigee of 7.3 nautical miles of altitude. So this is a uh, descent uh, orbit. So all that's left for me to land on moon, moon is to ignite that DPS engine and uh, use guidance to bring me down to a safe landing. However, in this video, I want to circulate my burn using the DPS engine. Uh, and if I take a look at Apogee, it's 60 nautical miles of altitude. Uh, so in some of the Apollo missions, uh, this is descent orbit burn to get into the descent orbit. It was a burn called descent orbit injection or DOI. The DOI burn is carefully planned to bring this down from a circular orbit uh, and bring Perigee uh, close to the landing site and then um, uh, the landing would be done from this orbit. It's important that the guidance computer uh, starts at 50,000 feet of altitude. However, uh, in some of the Apollo missions, the descent orbit uh, burn, the DOI burn, was done in the lunar module instead of the command module. So you would detach the lunar module in a circular orbit at 6060, and then you would use the DPS engine to bring the lunar module down. So the, this update brings quite a lot of updates to how this inertial platform is set, and it adds uh, some new capabilities to program 52. So if I now go into uh, my burn planner, I want to circulate my orbit at Apogee, so that's uh, phase 180. And from experimenting, I know that 73 is the perfect uh, delta V in terms of feet per second. So I want to burn 73 feet per second uh, prograde at Apogee. Uh, and that will bring me into a circular orbit. And this is all predicted. The, uh, the end result will deviate slightly from this, of course. So now I can either go ahead and hit request and I will use the existing inertial platform. What would then happen is that the attitude that is being uplinked to the lunar guidance computer uh, would reflect the attitude of this burn direction uh, on the given inertial platform. However, if uh, I would like to realign this uh, the gyros to uh, make more sense with this burn direction, I would go ahead and use a new feature called uh, the set preferred. Uh, if I press this, then you can see that uh, option, uh, uh, the message is telling me you to go through program 52 option one to torque the gyros uh, before I request the actual burn. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that. So on the guidance computer, I can go program 30, uh, verb 37 on 52, and this loads uh, program 52, then I'll use verb 22e, this is to change the R2, enter, and then uh, plus one, that's option one, and that's the preferred burn direction, and then I'll hit enter, and then pro and pro. Now the uh, inertial platform has been uh, torqued and changed to uh, reflect the burn direction. So if I now go ahead and uh, hit request, uh, the burn has been uplinked and is ready for me to execute. Uh, you could go ahead and use the same procedure as you used to. Uh, by just going here and hit request and then you could uh, uh, direct it to program 52 and change the platform but that would make the attitudes that has been uplinked to the uh, guidance computer uh, deviate from what the real burn had however uh, you would usually go in and set the attitudes to all zeros anyways so if you prefer to do that then feel free to continue doing that procedure uh, but this will make more sensible uh, data get into the LGC once you request burns. So if I now go into verb 48, 
to set up my digital autopilot. Uh, if I go to checklists and then uh, the Luna module, I can go to the depth setup and you can see that uh, verb 48 is used to set up the digital autopilot. And I want to just set, uh, since I'm going to go ahead uh, with a burn, I just want to set these um, dead bands and rates to something very small. So I'll go ahead and go to verb uh, 21 and I'll set it to one zero. And then let's see, um, dead band, uh, I want this to be very precise and I'll set the rate to 0 0.5 degree per second. And I hit pro, pro. Okay, so now um, the IMU is uh, torqued towards the burn direction uh, and the digital autopilot has been set. What I'm going to go ahead and do now is to run program 30. That's the program that you want to do before you to prepare burn. So you can see that the ignition time is set and the burn uh, vector has been set. And if I hit pro, you can see that it predicts a circular-ish uh, orbit uh, for me. I can hit pro. And now the countdown start. And before I do anything with this attitude, I'm going to just quickly time scale to get closer to this. So I'll stop this about 10 minutes ahead of the burn. It gives me some time. Uh, typically the Luna module and the command module, they move very slow in terms of attitude change to conserve, uh, conserve fuel. However, in this video, I will be uh, using some manual pitch and control to speed that up a little bit for the sake of the video length. Okay, so now uh, I've uh, set up for the burn and I'm going to go to verb 49. And verb 49 basically asked me to get into an attitude. And you can see that uh, there's uh, uh, R1, R2 and R3 got some numbers in them. This is basically the attitude that you should maneuver to to point the DPS engine uh, in the direction of the burn. So this is basically like a, a minus 90 degree pitch basically. So if I go and hit pro and I set up the control and accept this, the attitude is starting to maneuver towards this point. So I'm going to start helping this pretty soon and uh, I'll do roll first. There we go. And then uh, while this one moves, I'll go to 37 and 40. This one will uh, ask me kind of the same question. Uh, I'm already maneuvering towards this point, but if it wouldn't, it would start to do this uh, now and you would need to uh, wait for it uh, in, in this view instead. So now uh, while I wait for the burn, it's about six minutes away. I will go ahead and help this attitude a little bit. So that was somewhere here. And obviously I'm consuming a lot of fuels by doing the, going this fast. And uh, I'll also help roll. And uh, pitch, uh, AO, I mean. There we go. And now I'll just use, uh, let the autopilot do the rest of its job. It's going to try and get quite precise eventually uh, because of the way that I set up the digital autopilot. We're five minutes away from the burn, so I'm going to, going to time scale a little bit more. There we go. And uh, we're now set up for the burn. 
I'll just verify everything here. I'll uh, make sure master alarm is set, a reset, and uh, or the pilot is fully on. Uh, the engine, the sent engine is armed. We're 25 sec seconds away from the burn. I'm going to open up the map view and uh, we will monitor the burn uh, on this one as well. 15. Burn direction, prograde, five seconds, zero, ignition. And there we go. We now entered uh, a uh, uh, circular-ish orbit. Uh, my burn wasn't uh, perfect this time. And uh, the reason for this was my, that my attitude was a little bit out. However, it's still close and I could go ahead and uh, fix some of the residuals myself and hit pro. So that's basically how you set up the DPS burn and the I'm use using program 52 to execute burns in the Luna module. Uh, of course, I will continue to refine this and uh, refine the attitude sets and everything uh, going forward, but at least this sets the basics and you are now fully able to perform uh, a DOI burn using the DPS engines instead of the CSM or the SPS. So I'm going to create a separate video on how to do that uh, pretty soon, uh, where I'll go through how to set up uh, a DOI burn and how to design the DOI burn so that you reach uh, the side splashdown point. But with that, I want to say thank you uh, for watching and uh, thanks to everyone who has been reporting issues and bugs and providing me feedback. And uh, uh, also a special shout out to the test pilots as well. So thanks again. I hope you will enjoy this update.